The name of our first speaker is Lydia Pitcher, and the topic of her presentation is the Wikidata Revolution. Thank you very much. So, uh, what I would like to do is give you an overview of all the things that happened on Wikidata. Uh, over the past year and what we're doing over the next uh, year and more. Um, and I want to start with reminding us why we're actually here. Um, we're here to give more people more access to more access to the data. Um, and of course, because getting out and structured data is kind of fun. <laughs> um, <clears throat> what happened over the past year? We've um, grown the number of active editors quite significantly. We're now at 8,700, which is very cool. And at uh, 1,400 very active editors, those are people who do more than 100 edits a month, and we love them. Raise your hand if you're one of them. Woo! Um, we've also grown the content quite a bit. Um, we're now at near, uh, a bit over 30 million items and uh, 3,600 properties to use on those items, which is a lot. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, we've also um, grown the depth of our content quite a bit. So over the past year, we're now at an average of six statements per item. So if you go on a random item, it will probably have about six statements. Um, and over the past year, we've grown that we've added about one and a half statements to every item, which I think is pretty cool. Um, but there are also areas where I think we're still lagging behind quite a bit on on our promise of giving more people more access and more knowledge. Um, for example. Here you can see how many labels and items on Wikidata have. And the blue one um, shows items that have one label, um, meaning it's accessible in probably one language. Um, and <coughs> that is quite a lot still. And I think that is one of the things we need to, to continue to improve over the next year. Another interesting thing that um, you can see here is what what are we describing in Wikidata? Um, we started out with bootstrapping Wikidata from Wikipedia articles, so all the things that are described on Wikipedia. But what you can see here in yellow is the the items on Wikidata that don't have any link to a Wikimedia project. Meaning, we're starting to describe more and more things that are um, outside of the topics we've covered so far. That is really cool, I think. Another thing that happened over the past year is that the usage of Wikidata's data on Wikipedia has grown quite significantly. Um, there is, for example, this category on English Wikipedia, which um, tries to track articles on English Wikipedia that have uh, an info box that's completely filled from Wikidata, no local data in it. Um, and right now that has uh, already a more than a thousand entries. That is not all, but um, that is already a, a pretty significant number and I, I expect this to grow um, a lot over the next year. With your help. <laughs> um, our Twitter endpoint is also getting quite a lot of attention. Um, 2.3 million queries are posted every single day now, which is quite a lot. Um, but what would impress me even more is that at this point, one third of all edits in Wikimedia projects is done on Wikidata. <laughs> <laughs> It gets even better. Um, 
So Wikimedia projects have finally started to grow again over the past uh, years in terms of um, edits done by non-bot accounts. And um, it's now at roughly 2% year on year. And the uh, astonishing thing for me is that almost all of that is happening on Wikidata. So what, what have we done in, in terms of technology improvements? Um, we have done a ton of um, improvements for, for user experience, making it easier to use Wikidata. Um, for example, with support for Citrate, making it easier to, um, to add references to existing data. There's still a lot of work to do, but we're getting there. Um, statements now have a meaningful order, so that not some random statement is the first one. Um, and um, when you share links to Wikidata items on social networks, they now look pretty. Um, Probably one of the most important topics to work on, though, um, is data quality. And the biggest um, strikes we've made there, I think, are uh, the constraint checks and the forwards. Constraint checks um, existed for a long time, but were really hard to find for people. So they, you define rules like a person should be born before they die, and then you find, yeah, Except if they're a time traveler, then maybe not. Um, and then um, Wikidata gets checked if there's any items on it where that rule is violated. Um, now, what we've done is make that much easier to understand and find. So if you now look at an item, you will see uh, those little, little indicators there um, that show you there might be a problem with the statement and you can. You can check it and uh, fix it if it's wrong or that mark it as an exception if not. Um, or it has existed for for some time now, uh, but has seen significant improvements. Um, and it's used to judge if an edit is probably good or probably vandalism, making it easier for patrollers, for example, uh, to do their work and, and check edits because they can concentrate on the stuff that is uh, likely bad as opposed to everything that is going on. Which is quite important at <coughs> this point on Wikipedia. Um, and we've also started, thanks to work by Aaron and, and his team, um, on automated uh, quality predictions. So this is trying to, uh, by machine learning, judge the quality of an item and then see how that evolves over time. Um, so you can see, for example, here um, that the quality of the item about G uh, Jimmy Wales went up quite a bit. <laughs> so th this is still experimental, and, and there's uh, unfortunately not much you can try yet, but um, that, will, that will come. Documentation has always been a sore spot, <laughs> um, but we've also started tackling that with a new um, portal for the query service, explaining how to write queries and uh, how to serve your own query service if you want to do that and so on. Um, and we've made it uh, a portal for data donation, which explains to institutions, for example, how to how to approach Wikidata and how to donate their data. And how to work with Wikidata as a community and become part of that. <coughs> One of the shiny, flashy things <laughs> on Wikidata is a query service that has also seen a lot of improvements. For example, we now have uh, support for linked data fragments, which makes it easier to run really complex, long-running queries, which are not possible on, on the query service itself. Um, we, we've added support for federation, meaning you can combine data from Wikidata with data from other repositories in one Sparkle query and, and find um, interesting things that combine the data from, from different places. Um, and we've added uh, shiny new visualizations, which I recommend you check out. I have some examples. And what's probably um, most interesting for those of you who are not inclined to write Sparkle queries themselves is the Query Helper, which is a, 
uh, point and click thing that lets you um, <coughs> click together your own uh, Sparkle query without actually having to run Sparkle. There's still a lot of calls to be done and improvements, but it should help a lot of you to, to uh, be able to get to the information how we can more easily. All right, and <laughs> since, <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> we've, since we've uh, made it easier to get to that data, people have been writing more and more really interesting queries. For example, <laughs> finding plants that have an emoji, very useful. <laughs> or uh, country flags that include a sun, why not? Or paintings by Vermeer that have a map with them. <laughs> or here, fictional items named after real items. Or uh, Trees in the US that were grown from seeds that ran around the moon. <laughs> <laughs> it's all stuff you can find over <laughs> there. Um, or here, uh, software titles uh, rank by how many file formats they can open. Oh, so if nice. you ever wonder which uh, program to open a file with, um, Mathematica is a pretty good plan. <laughs> <laughs> The article placeholder is giving small Wikipedias a little fact sheet for topics where they don't have an article. And I encourage um, readers to start becoming contributors and writing an article about them after giving them some basic information about the topic they were looking for. We've improved that um, by, for example, making them findable in, in search engines so people can actually find them, um, mm -hmm. and making it possible to translate from other Wikipedias directly from those pages. Um, hopefully making it again easier for people to, to contribute to smaller Wikipedias. Um, for Wikipedia itself, the biggest thing I think uh, was the, re uh, the release of a prototype for how to edit Wikidata data directly from Wikipedia, um, which is a very uh, much requested feature because people don't necessarily want to go to Wikidata um, to change the data they see in an info box. But at the same time, it's pretty complicated. So um, we worked for a long time on this and, and now have a, have a quick dummy that we would love to get feedback on. If you want to try it, talk to Lea, me, or uh, Jan. Jan? Okay. Um, another thing we've uh, done for Wikipedia um, and the, the other projects is that now when you edit an article or when you look in its page information, you will see which items contribute information to that article. Um, so it's no longer a black box. And another thing that people have been waiting for a long time is support for enhanced recent changes. Meaning um, there are two versions of um, recent changes. One of them supported Wikidata before, one didn't, that was them do, and you can see Wikidata changes on Wikipedia. Another big topic, structured data on commons, um, meaning we want to make it possible to describe uh, the files that are on Wikimedia Commons with structured data to make commons better and um, multilingual, easier searchable, and easier, easier to reuse, and so on. Uh, if you want to hear more about that, um, come to the session tomorrow, or come to me to see a demo of what we already have. <coughs> the same goes for lexicographical data, so we want to make it possible to store data about words, like um, they are in a dictionary, or specifically a dictionary, in Wikidata to support Wiktionary. The first thing we've done there um, is to automate the language mix between individual um, Wiktionary editions to um, take away a lot of maintenance um, from those Wiktionaries that they didn't want to do. <coughs> and we have um, created a demo system that I'm going to present to uh, on Sunday. If you want to know more about that, I would love to, uh, to see you there and uh, get your feedback on. <laughs> There's the, the word <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, 
what are the big wins and challenges uh, of the last year? I think the biggest challenge we, we face and, and we will continue to face is coping with the growth of the community and the growth of the content at the same time and how, how, we, can, um, how we can deal with that uh, in, a, in a good way together. Among the biggest wins for, for me was um, that the Big Media Foundation is now continue, continuously funding uh, Wikidata development. Freebase um, is finally shut down completely by also um, shutting down the API that was available. The person data template on English Wikipedia and many others like it are, are now removed. And we will have the first conference for Wikidata in October for Wikidata's fifth birthday. Mm -hmm. I hope to see many of you there. Um, other things I, I really, really enjoyed over the last year were a lot of partnerships um, that were happening. Uh, for example, with um, OpenStreetMap and Mapbox, or ContentMine, uh, My Society, GeneWiki, and many more. Also, big names starting to use our data, like Quora, Zero Rings, or really the um, Finnish, Publish, Finnish Public Broadcasting Agency. People started building really cool tools, uh, like lib.reviews, where you can review basically anything that has a Wikidata item. Or people building games, like uh, Gesser, you can see up here. It shows you an image um, and a map, and then you have to figure out on the map the most likely position of that image, and it will give you points based on how close you actually were. It's really hard. <laughs> you should try it. Um, or everything is connected, which is a game that, um, based on connections in Wikidata, lets you connect level, these little tiles. <coughs> and if you got the right connection, then, then um, you can win the game. If you get the right connection between all those, um, those tiles, it's actually hard. <laughs> but a nice um, pastime for uh, while watching TV, for example. Um, Another thing that was built is Scolia. Um, it gives you <coughs> profiles for um, universities, scholarly publications, um, scientists, and so on, based on the data that is in Wikidata. Like um, you can see here, uh, MIT, and a list of people who, who work there and their, their scientific work. Or Monumental. <coughs> which is a tool to support, for example, Wikidata's monuments. Um, and it shows you pretty pages for monuments, um, pictures, descriptions, and so on. Um, and here you can see a, a map of Montreal with um, interesting uh, buildings and monuments uh, in the area. And here, uh, this is uh, the last one. Um, is uh, the uh, gender gap tool, which analyzes um, different Wikipedia, but also Wikidata based on distributions of gender. So that we can see, for example, that over time we are covering um, more or less women and so on. And that really helps get a better understanding of where our gaps in the content are and, and where we can improve it. And this was when I finally knew Wikidata was famous. But we <laughs> used Wikidata's data in an article to prove that 2016 was actually that horrible. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's coming? What? The biggest thing um, we could need to continue to work on is data quality, both in the community but also on the development side. Um, and the biggest improvements there I think we can make is get more eyes on the data. So get the data used in many, many more places and expose it to many more people so they can help us um, maintain it and make it available to many more people. The primary sources tool um, will be improved to help with data imports that might not be completely clean and that need a um, given review stuff in between before it goes into Wikidata. Um, I would love to see better feedback mechanisms 
for external parties that use our data so they can say, hey, here our users found issues in your data, um, here they are, maybe you want to work on them um, and help with um, fixing them. And, but also more, more checks on the data we have. For example, by checking our data against data that is in other databases and, and flagging, flagging differences. And the last thing I have there is uh, something called signed statements, so that institutions who want to do that and who donate data to Wikidata can give a kind of um, stamp of approval to the data that they donated, so we have some more security about that data. <coughs> Beyond the data quality is important both for, for Wikimedia as well as outside Wikimedia. There are things uh, there are things that are more useful that are needed to make Wikidata more useful for the projects inside Wikimedia. Um, for example, the prototype I showed for editing Wikidata's data directly on Wikipedia. Um, improving how Wikidata changes are shown on the watch list um, on Wikipedia and the other projects. Um, I would love to, to expand the article placeholder to better support our small projects. Um, I would uh, like us to, to continue to work on automated list generation so that we can, uh, especially for small projects, provide them with the ability to, to generate and update list articles automated, automatically with the query to Wikidata. Mm. And of course, um, continuing to work on supporting uh, commons and dictionary to the presentations. Um, <clears throat> and another thing there we, we've already started working on but that is not yet quite ready is um, a tool to better understand how the different Wikipedias <coughs> and other Wikimedia projects are using Wikipedia's data so that um, we all can better understand um, how, how the current situation is and where we want to improve it. So for example you, you will get reports like this and um, <clears throat> that show, for example, um, that specific projects are using a lot of data about books, or um, not a lot of projects are using data about scientific articles, for example, and so on. Or here, <laughs> um, this is something that will show you that, for example, um, data about Clint Eastwood is used in a very similar way as data about Matt Damon. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Um, there will be interesting insights in that one. <laughs> um, that was for for the Wikimedia project, but um, Wikidata is also really useful for for the project for projects outside Wikimedia, and, and I would like to make it more useful for them as well by, for example, working more closely with uh, people who use our data and who, who donate data to us, um, and making Wikibase the software that um, runs. Uh, under, under Wikidata, possible to install and, and uh, use also outside Wikimedia, so that we can have much more of an ecosystem of different installations that can work together nicely with Wikidata. You should come to the Wikidata beta, which is tomorrow at uh, from seven to eight, and get goodies. <laughs> yeah, we have goodies. Um, and with that, I want to close. This is Wikidata. Um, one year ago, this is Wikidata wow. today. <laughs> okay, so this is a show. Um, each dot here is an article or an item on Wikidata that has a geo coordinate. So Montreal, for example, has a dot there, the Eiffel Tower has a dot there, and so on. Thank you very much. Are there questions? Yes. Well, you mentioned uh, that the project gets uh, funding from the foundation. Are you thinking about what happens when the foundation wants to shift its priorities? Um, right now, the priorities have been made clear as in Wikidata is important, which <laughs> I agree. <laughs> um, 
if that should change, I, I believe we can find other sources for, for continuing work on it. We can't, we're not pushing it anymore because it's uh, integrated. So, uh, you talk about what are you thinking about in the near future. I'm, I'm just wondering, do you plan to, or what's your idea about uh, something like protected claims or something that we can like combat future vandalism? Like, yeah. it's not an issue right now, but we yeah. have more and more and bigger and bigger database. So, right. sometimes it's like hard to to maintain like our topic. Right, absolutely. Um, I, I would like to keep Wikidata as open as possible. Over time, that will probably mean making it slightly less open than it um, was when we started. Um, that, that's just a natural um, way of, of such a project. Um, nonetheless, um, at this point, I would, I would like to not um, protect individual statements, but instead work on tools that allow us to continue to keep it open. Like I, the, the statements I mentioned, the automatic list generation, which which makes it possible for you to more easily find find changes that were made and so on. Now, at some point, that might not be enough, and, and then we might have to go go a more forceful way. But I hope to push that back quite a bit <coughs> if possible. If it works for OpenStreetMap, you can edit everything. And if it works, no. <laughs> I already know the topic, but can you possibly elaborate a bit about the distributed, um, the distributed uh, um, world of uh, wiki pages and? Uh... Mm -hmm. So um, I don't think Wikidata should be the one place where open data happens, um, because that would be very, very unhealthy for for several reasons. One is that everyone will want to come to us and get the data into Wikidata, which at some point will not, not work. Um, but on the other hand, it's also a single point of failure and, and a single point of contention and so on. Um, so what I would much rather like to see is an ecosystem where, where Wikidata is clearly a central part, but where there are very many specialized Wikibase installations or, or similar projects that, that maintain data they know a lot about. The best example that already exists is music frames. They, they've been um, working on music data for many, many years. They know the ins and out of data about music. And um, they have very, very detailed data <coughs> about music. And they should um, continue that work. It's amazing. And we can benefit from their work, and we do, and they can benefit from our work, and they do already. And I would love to see much more of that. It's probably the next one that is going to be in the ecosystem, maybe the, the, the commons uh, structure data. So there will be like two instances of yeah. Yeah. data. Yeah. Yeah. And there are already a, a handful of um, existing Wikibase installations, but um, they need much more support uh, to make that really flourish. All right, I believe we are almost out of time. Thank you very much. Session description. So whenever I make some 
references to documents that are somewhere you will find clickable links there. So yeah, to give you a short overview of um, my today's sessions, uh, I will talk about how we approach the ingestion of uh, performing arts related data into Wikidata and the whole background. I will just talk about the whole background as well. Uh, because I have been working for several years now with the Swing Theatre Collection, which has a quite a large database of uh, performance, uh, performing arts productions uh, from Switzerland, mainly theatre but also dance. And they are in, in the process of merging with another institution, the Swiss Dance Archives, and they're also in the process of, of migrating their old database to a new system. And the new system is supposed to work on, on linked data basis. Uh, the data has been published already mostly as open data, but there's still some data cleansing issues going on, so we're in the process of actually publishing uh, that data, but it will still be a few years from now before it actually is uh, in the clean form. Then a second push that I've started uh, earlier this year is about thinking how to kind of, once we have this Swiss database, how to create an international performing arts database. We have been in contact with other partners throughout Europe who are interested in, in similar ideas. And my, my idea was, or my, my intuition was that the easiest way to actually uh, implement that right now is to go through Wikidata. So there will be a Swiss performing arts database that will most likely not uh, run on Wikidata or Wikibase. And, but at the international level there's ideas to kind of connect similar databases and, and there I would suggest that we really move into the direction of using Wikidata as a basis. I will then also kind of continue with uh, some reflections uh, about synergies between uh, the two approaches and uh, cross-pollination between them. And we'll finish uh, with a list of current challenges and insights, which some of you probably are not unacquainted with if you're familiar with Wikidata. So the Swiss Performing Arts Platform is just a few facts, like we're talking about an inventory of performing arts production in Switzerland. The professional productions alone, they make up uh, more than 55,000 uh, entries. Then in addition of that, we have inventories of organizations, venues, events, etc. related to performing arts uh, in Switzerland. So it's kind of, we have basically full coverage of them. And there's an inventory of heritage objects related to the performing arts that are held by these two uh, institutions. And uh, in the future, there will be also a media repository with digitized heritage objects. Well, this media repository already exists, but it's in a very um, basic form, right? And the future idea is to kind of uh, connect these things together and to interlink the data these institutions, these institutions hold, with data held by other institutions and content from other providers. One important reason why they're moving in this direction is also because they want to improve the, the data ingestion process to realize some efficiency gains there, improve the access to the data. Right now the data is accessible only from within the institution and the future will be access, uh, accessible online. There will be a single point of access to all theater related or performing arts related archival material in Switzerland. So that's the basic idea. So we have a lot of archives that do not specialize in theater or performing arts, but they do have material. We would like to facilitate data reuse, enable online collaboration, also see what are the potential, what is the potential of uh, crowdsourcing to actually cater or, or, or um, curate some, some of the data. And of course, for the institution, building that block is an important prerequisite to also create them later on uh, an interesting media repository also for digital war material and hopefully material where we actually have resolved the copyright issues. So the last few months I have been quite busy developing a 
forming arts data model. There's a preliminary version uh, online. It's click clickable. It's also linked from from the wiki data wiki project on, on the foreign arts. It covers like the whole further stuff, like theatrical, musical, cho uh, choreographic works, but then also has the aspect of the performance work, which is an additional uh, layer of uh, performing some arts productions. Then covers contributors, artists, creators, all the performance roles, venues, organizations, theater seasons, and all kinds of events around theater, festivals, competitions, awards, and then of course, when we get more into the archival area, we have the heritage objects that can be described and the archival structures. So we are also relying on the, the new data model called Records in, Con in Context uh, that was developed or that is being developed by the International Archival um, Association. So the the main philosophy here is to create the RDF-based ontology with a focus on linked data. Uh, we are mostly drawing on, on the most well-known or widespread uh, data models and ontologies in the archival, library, and museum sectors, but we're also mapping to ontologies, to other ontologies that are widely used within the LOD community. So just to give you a, a short overview how, how what kind of data is there and how it gets there. So one major data source is actually theater programs. So you have annual programs, like this one. So you you um, can get out the theater season and all the productions that were put up. And then for specific plays, we have like uh, entries like uh, what work was performed, who was involved. Um, The dates when it was uh, when it was shown on the, on the left hand side, you also have the roles, the characters. Then there's not only the stable theaters which are all which have their own uh, ensembles and their yearly or annual program. We also have touring companies that will show up in different venues over the time. Uh, guest performances, which make the whole thing a bit more complicated. Then we have. Sometimes at the level of single performances, not just the production, but at the level of single performances, we have guest appearances by some stars, or if somebody gets ill, the substitutes. We really have data about this, so it's, it's a quite a detailed um, level already. Then we have all, all kinds of uh, information about theater organizations. Like we may have one theater production company, but that is kind of managed by another company, and is a member of uh, a national theatre association and then the theatre production company itself is made up of various artistic ensembles like for example orchestra, dance, uh, drama, etc. Then of course we have uh, archival documents and they're described in their context so we have a reference to the work but also a reference to the, the actual performance or production when it was, uh, was, for example, a film. Yeah. So that's just to give you a background what there is in this uh, Swiss performing arts database. Now if you if we think further how to achieve an international performing arts platform based on Wikidata, we can already have a look at what is already um, existing. But let me talk first about the vision. So the vision would be to realize an international performing arts database on the basis of Wikidata, similar to the Sum of All Paintings project, which tries to realize or attempts to realize a, an international, quite complete database of all paintings. So here we would have a database of all performing arts productions. Uh, that would provide a powerful finding aid also for performing arts related content on Wikimedia Commons. I will show you some of the content. There is a lot of content, but it's kind of all spread out and quite messy and not, not integrated in uh, that way. We would also like to promote more Wikidata powered performing arts related information in various language versions of Wikipedia. Also, 
you already have structured data on Wikipedia about performing arts, but it's not sitting on Wikidata, and it's, all, it's also not very coherent. Uh, there's some areas where we have a lot of data already. I'll show you some, some uh, examples. And of course, we'd like to get heritage institutions to provide uh, further uh, content and data about performing arts. But I believe that we first need to get, get ready to kind of provide the, the whole setting and the structure to efficiently integrate that. So status quo Wikidata, we have uh, now several wiki projects uh, for the performing arts, for cultural venues, cultural events, yeah. where we start streamlining. Hmm? Yeah, it's one on theater, exactly, mm -hmm. where, we start, uh, stream, yeah. <laughs> where we start streamlining the ingestion of, of data, and we can follow discussions about the data models, we can now uh, list uh, data sources to be ingested in the future. So, uh, I think there's also synergies with other existing projects in the area of bibliographic records and authority control regarding uh, person data. So, achievements so far and challenges. We have first experiences with data ingestion, with the data ingestion process. We have a few case reports and starting to write guidelines. Uh, I started also to check to what extent the data model we have developed on the Swiss side is already kind of present in some form on Wikidata, so there is some, there's already quite a lot of elements, but there's still a lot of work to do if you want to be able to inject all kinds of data we have. Uh, we've initiated an overview of existing data sources, but I also have to say that data cleansing and interlinking is still a huge challenge. Mm -hmm. like, uh, we're not moving very fast on that. And so far, there's still very little performance data actually ingested. If you look at Wikimedia Commons, as I mentioned, it, there is data about theater, uh, but it needs organizing and curation. And I hope that structured data on Wikimedia Commons is, to, is, is going to act as an enabler in that sense, to get, get Commons um, entries for for um, performing arts more organized and more as better navigatable afterwards. On Wikipedia, I have the impression that there's great potential, but there's also a need for uh, coordination. And as I mentioned before, data so far is usually not pulled from Wikidata. So I think we really need to make an effort there to consolidate what already exists. I give you some examples like. That's one of the touring companies I, I showed before. Uh, so actually somebody on, on French Wikipedia went through and actually already created a list of productions for, for several seasons in a row. So we already have quite a lot of data, but it's sitting only on French Wikipedia. So it cannot really readily be pulled to other, to other Wikipedias and you see like, um, I think there's parts then also missing. So for some years, for some years they, they found data. For other years, we don't have data. So one task would be then to also try to complete these things. Then we have info boxes about works, quite quite common. We have uh, info boxes about people involved in the performing arts, like a, a very famous cinematographer, uh, Alexander Galovin. Uh, here we also have on Russian. We they started to list uh, the, the performances of the, the production he was involved in, uh, which goes really in the direction where the Swiss, the Swiss uh, performing arts uh, database is at. So you kind of start kind of connecting uh, productions with people. Or here we have a list of theatrical works by William Shakespeare, or info boxes about theatre venues. Here we have uh, for the Bern Bernese Theatre, we have a whole list of artistic directors active at this place. So that would be data that is kind of also sitting within the Swiss Performing Arts uh, database, and we have that data for all major professional theatres in Switzerland. And we, of course, will need to find other data providers in other countries who could give us the data in a more centralized manner. Now it's like bits and pieces everywhere. 
Regarding contributors, there are numerous Wikipedias, Wikidata is uh, partly organized for wiki projects that are involved uh, in some form in, in getting data about performing arts into Wikidata or Wikipedia. Then we have the Swiss Theatre Collections and Data Provider. We have various uh, Belgian institutions of data providers. Romain is working with them. It's Romanian. Then Carnegie Hall has published their uh, production data, uh, I think about a month ago. They're interested in although we get wow. it into uh, uh, Wikida. So they don't have just the classical theater and, and, um, and dance. They also have like political uh, debates and stuff like that. And what I have started to do is I, I'm, I'm kind of giving out students' assignments to start working on some of the aspects we need to cover. So the next steps would be to kind of implement elements of the Swiss Performing Arts data model on Wikidata and create data modeling examples. So let's say more data modeling examples. Some of them already exist within the, the project like the Wiki Project Theater. And then we'll kind of uh, be able to speed up data ingestion. So one, one thing is really the data model, and the other one is data cleansing and interlinking, like we still have a big uh, challenge uh, in terms of uh, uh, kind of creating items for, for persons right now that are just sitting there in the database as strings. So Stravinsky. <coughs> Stravinsky in French-speaking Switzerland is spelled differently from Stravinsky in German-speaking uh, mm -hmm. Switzerland, and it's not easy to uh, combine them. So it's, it's yeah, nice work. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, we'll need some community building, and that's why I'm here today. So I hope to kind of uh, be able to um, get some more interested people. Uh, and active around this project and to talk to people who have been uh, <laughs> <laughs> active in the theatre field and we've been them before. And there are loads of further tasks down the road. So, like interesting data, then monitoring mm -hmm. data quality, that's what Lydia also mentioned, data quality and completeness will be a, a big issue after it's in, in view also in, of using this data within Wikipedia. And then, of course, we'd like to pull more and more data from Wikidata to include it in, in Wikipedias. And uh, I think Wikimedia Commons will be also a big uh, area for, for uh, maintenance work, then to kind of link the existing media objects we have in the area of performing arts to a performing, like a performance database that is slowly growing within. So I was also <coughs> thinking about um, synergies, and I've also had this discussion with, uh, with my colleagues at the Swiss Theatre uh, Collection. So what Swiss Performing Arts platform or similar, like you could take any uh, performing arts archival institution, I think, um, what they can bring to the table is they can, they have plenty of performance data. They also now are kind of developing a comprehensive data model for the performing arts domain, which is able to describe all the data they have. Uh, they have plenty of know-how and source material about uh, performing arts, and in the long run they will have digital content. However, I have to say that in the long run, because right now they may have some digital content that can be released uh, freely, but most of their digital content has copyright issues. It's not going to get away soon, but maybe by working on digital born material that is now coming in from the theatres, getting the right agreements with the theatres, we might get um, <coughs> content quite quickly, like photographs of, of actors, etc. And on the side of, of uh, Wikidata, what, what Wikidata can bring to the table, we have um, a lot of complementary data that can be at a used to hook up with the existing data on the Swiss, uh, Swiss um, side and, and make it a richer experience for the users. 
and I think there's potential for crowdsourcing in certain areas, also crowdsourcing of certain parts of data maintenance. And for the Swiss institutions, I think it's also an interesting opportunity to see how their data model that fits their data is actually going to be received by the international <coughs> community, how it can kind of be made into a, a more common wide, widely spread, uh, widespread uh, practice of data modeling within the wider community. And of course, it's like it's the same story as for a lot of plan work. Uh, Wikipedia, Wikidata is uh, an excellent um, channel to get more visibility, to get exposure of performing arts related information. Uh, that's part of the mission, of course, of this institution to, to get that information out. Uh, it's really an, uh, an amazing work to actually collect all this information, but it's like performing arts has always been a niche. So there are not that many scholars, so I think it's a great opportunity also to push that knowledge out, this information out, to connect it with other pieces of information out there. So there's a, a series of areas for cooperation, which I see quite concretely. Uh, there's a mutual interlinking of data and content. There's uh, community building and outreach to further data providers. And then there's this aspect of establishing data modeling practice in the area of the performing arts at the international level. And I think at the national level, we'll try to organize uh, edutathons and similar events the Belgians have already started to do so, and there's interest also on, on the Swiss side. So now I have two slides left about current challenges and insights. <coughs> so, one, yeah. Same for them. Same, yeah. Same yeah, yeah. Same yeah, I mean, it's not really surprising, <laughs> right? Yeah. So we have, <coughs> I know, I'm getting there. Uh, so we have many legacy in, uh, issues uh, in the area of data science, and which take time. The institutions are working on it, but it's like we're not talking about one month or two months of data science, we're talking about two or three years of data science in some areas. We can automatize some parts, but there's a lot of uh, manual work to be, to be done. So. <coughs> then the data linking, like persons, organizations, works, heritage objects from other institutions, they need to be linked together to actually not only have RDS, but actually actual linked data. And that's another uh, big um, area uh, where we have to be, uh, where we have to focus uh, attention. And then there's the whole aspect of data model uh, development, but not only development, but kind of introduce it into a wider community, establish, and kind of create a data modeling practice. So now we have like a third. I would say a the theoretical data model on an empirical basis, like we have a good empirical basis with, with our uh, data. Um, but now it has to kind of take the next step and develop into a common, widely uh, shared practice. And of course, like for the institutions having to fund the whole thing, uh, kind of realizing efficiency gains at some point, saving costs or improving services is very important because that will actually keep the financing going in the long, in the long run. So, like when we talk about Wikidata, I think it's also a moment also to, to reflect how we can actually add <coughs> the power of crowdsourcing to the whole, to the whole game. Right now, when Wikidata contributors are still far and few between, sometimes have the impression that I'm like electrons in an atom, there are only a few of them and they rarely meet. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm really looking forward in getting some more traction there at the community level. And I think uh, an important aspect to that, of course, is to get Wikidata closer to Wikipedia, to get the, the many eyes also on it. That's what I mentioned before. So the, the challenge to, we have related to Wikidata is in, incorrect and incoherent data. So before ingesting data, we have to do a lot of tidying up. Uh, there's a lack of an explicit ontology. There are varying interpretations of how to use certain properties. We have the problems of multilingual uh, definitions of certain classes and also properties. And we don't have a master version, so we don't know if 
if they're contradictory definitions, we don't know which one to abide by. And we can expect that people working in, in, in another language will just stick to their definition, which in the long run will mean that kind of the data that is that is uh, described will, will be uh, messy, or like the descriptions will be messy, and a lot of work down the road to be done. So I think that's a big uh, area where we have to come up with a good solution. <coughs> and maybe we'll also be able to learn from other data modeling approaches, like from within the GLAM sector, which have a much more structured um, process of how to commonly develop data models and then roll them out into many institutions. Because we, we want to get a shared practice, and the shared practice usually needs to be established and can't just be changed by somebody who has a filter and say, like, okay, I'll just now change the English definition of this and that or of that property and hope that everybody else will actually abide by that. Then we have had also in the context of the, of the Belgian partners, a discussion whether Wikidata could actually serve as the main database for heritage institutions in certain areas. Would it be acceptable that their main base database about performing art in Belgium would be Wikidata itself? Mm. What are the issues connected to that? As I mentioned, like in the Swiss case, we're not going that road right now. We're, we're, we're finding a separate database. And then we can kind of start ingesting data from there or moving the data back and forth or uh, connect the data. Then there's monitoring data quality and completeness, a big issue. <laughs> and as I mentioned to, to Matus before, we're lacking uh, an ergonomic, customizable user interface for manual data entry. That, that's something that's very important for the, the Swiss institution, like internally, because they are taking like the programs before they came on paper, now they come um, in electronic format, but it doesn't make a big difference because the formats are very heterogeneous, so they have to manually enter the data, and what they do is, before they start entering data from a particular theater, they adapt the, the data entry, entry form to the structure, to the exact structure of, of the original document, so they can afterwards go through more quickly. It's already a big efficient gain when first entering the data, but it's a huge gain when after <coughs> doing the quality check, if you can actually go step by step and not like jump around in, in uh, like in, in Wikidata-like uh, structures. And we need to improve tools for data ingestion and monitoring. Uh, Magnus is working on the quick statements tool. We have been using that one. We have also added a few new uh, feature requests. And I also have to mention that with regard to writing guidelines, the evolving tools landscape is a big challenge because you write guidelines for one tool and then half a year later there's a new tool coming up and it's, it's, it's an, an impediment to, to scale. So yeah, and a big issue I'd like to discuss with you uh, in the following days uh, here is also how to improve guidelines, community structures, and, and in order to involve more GLAM personnel in the Wikidata uh, processes. So that's from my side. Somehow the other slide was moving. Yeah. So there's <coughs> there's a birds of feather session on Wikidata heritage data on Sunday. So maybe we'll have some time to really write that in a bit more there. Mm -hmm. If you have some short questions, I will take them now. But otherwise, we will probably have to yeah. switch to the market. <laughs> I've been involved in uh, land things, uh, museums, and uh, 
other cultural institutions uh, for a long, long time. Um, I've been one of the contributors uh, of some of our paintings. Some of the other contributors are in the room too. Um, the sum of our paintings, the goal of the project is to document every notable painting. Um, we've been doing it for about two and a half years. Right now the count is 200, uh, almost 230,000 paintings. It was bit higher, but we had some duplicates, so we merged them and uh, it's a bit lower right now. Um, we, the notability is uh, either because it's in a notable collection or it's by a notable uh, painter. And uh, actually, uh, that doesn't really give uh, a lot of problems right now. Um, a lot of data is coming in on a by collection basis, and in the last couple of years, we've been adding a lot of big collections. Recently, I've been doing state collections. This is, for example, the uh, vaccines, uh, the RCE, the Vaccines for Cultural Airport. Uh, they translated as Cultural Heritage Agency of the Netherlands. Um, they are in charge of assigning uh, heritage states to buildings, but they are also in charge of the National Art Collection, and they manage about 10,000 uh, works. And you see in other countries, like in Germany, each state seems to have a collection about the same, uh, same size. Uh, these kind of collections are coming in and uh, making uh, the number of paintings we have uh, grow a lot. Uh, I think we're still barely scratching the surface. Uh, 230 or 220,000 sounds like a lot of paintings. But if you look at the amount of big collections still out there, I think when we're at half a million, a million, we're getting close to covering public collections. Mm -hmm. So it's still uh, still a lot of work to do. Um, it's nice to see that um, uh, a lot of paintings, uh, when we started, already had a Wikipedia article. And it seems to be that the, the number of articles about paintings has grown too. We're now about 30,000 uh, articles about paintings. That's in all the languages combined. That's, uh, that's a lot of painting articles. Right? I think uh, Mona Lisa has about uh, 110 uh, articles right now, in 110 different languages. When I uh, last checked two years ago, it was 100. So it seems to be growing, and more people seem to be working on it. And the whole idea about some of our paintings is to have a focus goal. We want to have all the paintings. But the paintings are just the start. Because you can't describe a painting without adding the author. You can't describe it without adding the collection or what's in it. Uh, so you see all sorts of side projects or things evolve around it that help to uh, raise the general quality. For example, uh, we've been doing a lot with authority control. So uh, we, uh, we have a new collection. There's all sorts of names showing up, like uh, Beat mentioned. We just have strings. We don't know uh, who it is. So Duplicate names, and so we use an authority control, uh, mostly linked to, uh, to our databases, to establish who the person is, uh, and also uh, get more information and uh, remove duplicates. We have so many duplicates all over the place, because, uh, especially if you go transliteration. So you have, for example, a Russian artist, and it's uh, converted into Latin script in Dutch, <coughs> then in German, then in English. And uh, we keep on merging them all the time. And with the authority control, it makes it much easier because you see, like, hey, the same, uh, the, it's the same date of birth, or the date of death. Worked in the same city, that's probably the same person. Um, let's see. This is uh, one of the paintings by Princess Van Gogh. We were in New York uh, earlier uh, uh, this trip uh, for the weekend train. And uh, there was this huge group of people trying to take photos of this uh, painting. We now have uh, all the works by Vincent van Gogh on, uh, on Wikidata. We all have a source to catalog, and uh, it's not complete yet. There's still fields missing, but at least we know we have all of them, and uh, we know that uh, some source or some catalog supports it's made by van Gogh. We even include the ones that uh, are by now blocked, not by him, but by one of his uh, fellow painters. But it's actually quite difficult to uh, source paintings like uh, like that. Uh, so, so for example, this is uh, a, cat a catalog by um, Picasso. Picasso was prolific. He just 
splattered out paintings and, <laughs> and all sorts of things. So this catalog, if you want to buy a, a reprint, is I just checked, it's about ten to fifteen thousand euros to buy it. And so this original one is probably, if you want, to, it's not for sale. It's uh, and uh, those are art libraries, treasure deeds. They. It's not like you walk to your local library, uh, loan a book, and you know when you start writing a Wikipedia article, you, don't, you might go to the library and get a book out and work on it and return it the other week. These kind of books, it's basically impossible. We were uh, uh, looking at uh, Hopper uh, yesterday night, and uh, just like there's a couple of creation a about it, but you either needs a thousand dollar to buy it on eBay, or you need to go to Germany to some art library. Because that's the only place we could find it. So that's that's a big challenge for us. We can the, the a lot of museums are opening up their collections, putting things in line to get in, but <coughs> start using uh, looking at the artist angle. It's something it's much harder to, to find everything. It's the, it's still hiding in the libraries in a non-digital form. There's so much information out there, but you can't just access it. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, the, this painting is in the uh, in public domain, but a lot of the other works are not in the public domain. So sometimes people at Commons already did a lot of uh, groundwork, but if it's contemporary art, nothing is uncommon, so you can't use that either. Um, so maybe that's one of the possibilities to do outreach. Um, uh, your local, a lot of countries have. Um, art libraries or museums that have uh, large art libraries and uh, maybe that's the next step for us to uh, to reach out to them and see hey how can you help us uh, for most of these catalogs uh, there's a summary in the end just listing all the IDs and numbers that's from most of them that's already enough you don't need the whole uh, 2,000 pages book to uh, establish it so one of the things that happens with uh, some of our paintings is also started working on Commons. Um, so Commons uh, has a lot of uh, photos of paintings, reproductions, and uh, slowly we started linking them to Wikidata. So you can see here, this, this is the story night, you can click uh, on the link. And uh, so that means that we know that an image represents a certain painting, and especially for uh, well-known works, uh, there will be hundreds of images about the same painting. Right now, about 100,000 artworks on Commons, or images of artworks on Commons, are linked to Wikidata already. And you might have noticed these boxes on, um, on, uh, on Commons. Uh, they provide information about the artists and the institution. This data uh, used to be all duplicated. So it was someone would create an, an, an creator template, put all sorts of information in it, and save it, and it would be left there. But if someone updated a Wikipedia article or added a authority control link, it would go out of sync. It was redundant. And now slowly, this is being converted to grab the, the, the data from Wikidata. It's, uh, thanks to Yarek, who's sitting over here. He's doing a lot of work here. And um, so for example, all these authority control links here on the bottom, they're not stored in comments. They're all being pulled from Wikidata. Or the ones here. And um, slowly, things are being moved on. So in the end, we just have a reference to, uh, to a person and all the data is uh, is from Wikidata and um, it's already mentioned here in the, in the session structured data for Commons uh, the whole uh, plan to have structured data on, on Commons itself this is like the light version which slowly instead of doing a big jump towards structured data we're already preparing for it because it's going to be a really small step going for something like this with just basically it will be links at, uh, at this point to structure data so I'm excited about that I hope it will happen uh, soon um, but right now the project is only uh, it's focusing on paintings and it will probably be that because uh, having focus in the project helps to achieve something if you want to uh, I want to get all arts it's like pushing against a brick wall nothing happens but uh, if you take a specific topic and work with some people on it and try to uh, further it, you might want to switch projects every once in a while. Like, well, let's work a couple months on art, uh, on paintings, and then 
work on historic buildings and work on, uh, on theaters. Um, but there's a lot of uh, overlap context uh, uh, between those projects. Um, for example, uh, we could also go to other artworks, uh, sculpture. Um, a lot of the, uh, the museums for which we already have paintings also have a sculpture uh, collection uh, or, or public arts. And this is uh, one from the, the, the Metropolitan Museum of Art. They uh, quite recently uh, released their whole uh, collection, the, the metadata as a, on a CC0, but also all the images. So all the un images, this is actually not one from that collection. Uh, I couldn't find that quick uh, But uh, we have uh, already about 350,000 images from the Met now. So suddenly it becomes a lot more fun to, uh, to create items about it, sculptures and other things because we can illustrate them. <coughs> we have metadata, we, we, we know things about them. But once you go to other art forms, um, like this is a wet sculpture also um, in the map, um, we get into the problem we see uh, surfacing quite often. It's the, the, the multiple copies of something. Say um, this statue unique, it's, uh, it's in the map, but it turns out that after uh, the death of the author, this by the Dicka, uh, copies were made. So someone used this and made a cast and produced 28 copies of it, because he was very famous and they could earn money made it with it. Describing those kind of things in Wikidata can be hard, like this painting has a three versions, so he created three different items for the, for the different versions. But say if you go to prints, photographs, or uh, and, uh, movies, there are lots of copies out there. And uh, it seems that being pragmatic, so you first start with a concept and you split it up when needed, seems to work best. Uh, so you, you start with um, uh, an object uh, about uh, the, the statue. These are actually two copies um, out there. And once you need it, and once you think uh, uh, you want to uh, make the distinction, and usually you notice it when you have an item with has part this and has part that. That's about the time you need to start splitting up. But preemptive splitting, so make all sorts of uh, uh, items, and will probably create too many spread out information, and it will be hard to find. But uh, another one is uh, drawings. But the drawings, the scale goes up. Let's I assume a like public collection of around a million paintings. Drawings, it's probably tenfold, hundredfold. Mm -hmm. We have some art historians in the room. I don't know, but I've, if you look at some of the, the big art collections, they have like 5,000 paintings, but over 50,000, 100,000 drawings. Watercolors. Yeah, and watercolors, that's uh, the same thing. Uh, I looked at uh, the Tate, they had a collection of, I think, two or three thousand watercolors by one author, by uh, Turner. So once we start ingesting these into Wikidata, we need to be able to absorb it. If we, the, our limit as a community is time. Like, I don't think we will have any technical constraints, but people need to curate it, need to ingest it. We can't just dump data on Wikidata and it will work out uh, itself. We need to slowly add things that make our collection better uh, curated. It gets even worse if you go to prints. <laughs> there are uh, lots of good old prints. Uh, I have some uh, 1860 prints at home and it was from someone who basically was deduplicating his collection. Because uh, uh, for a time they would take old books and you know get the prints out and they would frame them people uh, collect them and uh, sometimes uh, like stamp collectors you would have the same uh, stamp twice. It's back, I think uh, if we would have lived 50 years ago we would all be stamp collectors, point collectors. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, in, and we would be sitting at home maybe go to to convention and to you know exchange. But in the digital form we can work together. Uh, I, I was wondering do we have a stamp project? Because that would be an excellent subject. Or yeah, there is yeah. English. Yeah, no, but on Wikidata you just describe them. Like, okay. Uh, in the catalog. 
or other coins is a typical that. example too. We probably have uh, and um, postcards. Sorry? Postcards. Postcards, yes, do or baseball cards. We're in. Uh, <laughs> see that baseball yeah. And uh, a lot, a lot of the things we learn from uh, the project, like some of the paintings or the, the, the projects that they have presented, uh, can apply to these domains too. You have to uh, properly define how you want to model things and uh, and slowly go through it and uh, keep the quality up. Um, photographs are right now, I guess, the worst in comments. Or on uh, they were several collections of historic photographs that are on Wikidata and they, they tend to be really huge. I'm not sure if we should go there or if we should just uh, keep it on, uh, on comments. But besides visual arts, we like context. We, in the wiki projects, we like to provide context for other things. But what about music? She's playing on a piano. What kind of piano is that? Or what, uh, I, I played in the piano. Well, probably play pieces when she was also playing it. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> what's, do we have an overview of that? Can, can we link those kind of things too? Uh, I guess, or if you go to uh, fashion, uh, there's a whole uh, research about based on what someone is wearing, you know, from what time it is and where someone lived. We're, I don't think we uh, have a lot of information about that, but we do have the scale and uh, to do things. There, there are fashion <coughs> projects, I think, in Wikipedia, but I'm not sure if there's one on uh, Wikidata. Although Wikidata seems to be a very suitable place to have an ontology about that. Uh, we think old-fashioned didn't change, but I think every five years they have a different trend. If you look at Dutch master paintings, they can say what city it is and what year based on the color. Because that changed every couple of years. It was a new summer fashion. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, or um, overlap with the historic buildings. This is uh, a painting from uh, the Gotemarkt uh, from the city of Arnhem, and uh, it's basically still the same. It's, the church is still there. The, the houses are mostly there. There's something different here and the other side, and uh, so and most of them are by now all national monuments. So you can all link that together. Like, in this painting, uh, the, 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 the place hall, the, this is the, where the meat used to be sold, is still there, it's still the same. Uh, uh, and we're doing that right now in other projects. Um, for Wikilov's monuments, all the historic buildings are currently being imported. Uh, that's a huge effort. Uh, several hundred thousand items about uh, old buildings. And using the same uh, thing where you model a, a country try to structure it and then get it into Wikidata. Um, or maybe furniture. In the, the Met collection, uh, there's a, a huge amount of photos of old furniture. And like, how would you call this couch? Chase lounge. Yeah, it's probably a very specific one. Or the, oh, just a couch. Or the, it could be the, the mirror here. Yeah. It's just a couch. couch. That's, um, so I wonder what what kind of fields are uh, like not too big uh, and, and not too small, which you can do the same approach and um, create context so that these all projects all overlap. Uh, someone imported all the Dutch streets uh, in the Netherlands. That's over three hundred fifty thousand items, and we're like, what the hell are we going to do? <laughs> <laughs> it's it was I think two years ago and. By the time I noticed it was already 80%, I like, oh, let, let just finish it. <laughs> <laughs> and, but, so if you look at the map of the Netherlands, we did an item, the one that uh, Lydia showed earlier. The Netherlands is so bright because there are 350,000 streets, uh, street, a tiny country. But now we figured out that, hey, most of the streets are actually named after someone. That's actually quite nice information to have. So, for example, there's a lot of uh, painter neighborhoods. So uh, I've been adding uh, like uh, the the Grand uh, uh, Plain uh, or uh, uh, Franz Hals uh, Street, adding the painters, and suddenly a piece of contextless information, the name of the street with some coordinates, gets gets context, and uh, that was unexpected. I, I think we considered just deleting everything two years ago, and now like, oh, it might be useful, but it just came too early because we're not in size and in scale. We were not yet ready yet. 
And I guess the, 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 the scope of Wikidata is a bit like a balloon. You just slowly make it bigger. And instead of you know dumping all the sweets on there for just letting it drop because nobody is really editing it, you have to wait for the point that okay, we're now ready for the streets. Or um, it's like if you start writing Wikipedia and you start writing about fa famous football players, and then you start with the third league of some unknown country. Let's finish the first, the very famous <laughs> football players before we go on to all the other things. Um, That's <laughs> one. <laughs> yes. We have one comment that we, uh, you know, street. Uh, one of the side effects of it is that uh, many items for, let's say, on Wikidata for, let's say, place of birth, yeah. are switching from, let's say, city level to a street or specific building level. Yeah. So then the, the in info boxes suddenly have to deal with that. Yeah. Which is kind of an like, interesting you know, challenge. Yeah. Yeah, like hospitals. Yes. Yeah. Hospitals. A lot of people we know in what hospitals they were born in. That's going to add it. Or they, we know which streets they were born on. Yeah. You know, so suddenly the item yeah. becomes a street and not, not a city. Yeah. That, that's it's hard to, hard to display that information on the city level in an yeah. info box. Yeah, usually the house has a, a plaque in, uh, on the door so you know what street it is. So that's an interesting <laughs> Just as a curiosity, in the Italian Wikipedia, we have 14 uh, lists of, uh, uh, of streets uh, yeah. of single cities. Yeah. So it's not so strange if someone uh, inputs uh, streets uh, in Wikidata. Yeah, just the scale, it overwhelms us. <laughs> it's, um, for Wikilos monuments, I uh, imported all the Dijks monuments, so the historic uh, buildings from the Netherlands. And for every street that had more than 10 entries, I created a street item and linked it together. And uh, that seemed to have worked, but then suddenly, boom, everything was there. And, yeah, we still don't know anything. Uh, it's always on the, on the street thing. Uh, have you possibly reached out to the OpenStreetMap community for uh, we we tried we try to, the yeah. to, to make some, some sort of uh, connection between OpenStreetMap and Wikidata? Also for the yeah. name <coughs> after. I was actually uh, hoping to run into people here and know more about OpenStreetMap than I do. Because we were playing around with the tags, like uh, you take the street, put the tag Wikidata on it, but it turns out that most of these inner city streets are like multiple parts. Because every time it crosses another street, there's a new part in OpenStreetMap. And I have no clue how to do it, uh, if I just have to do it to all of them or combine them. And, uh, yeah. Basically, you need to create a like, relation with all these roads, like it's like outlines of the cities, but it's getting messy. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, a um, few years ago, before we did that, we tried a, a glam project about fashion. Yeah. And uh, what, uh, what the problem was in common, because you could see uh, about fashion, what you need to know is not only what people are wearing, but what they are not wearing. And there are certain people that everyone wore tie, and you have a picture of that period that somebody does not have a tie, that's the odd thing. So we need to consider also not only what people are wearing, but the, the negative of that. It yeah. makes it more complicated. I'm, I don't know how to model that on Wikidata. <laughs> <laughs> He's not wearing... Uh, yeah. I'm, uh, I don't know hardly anything about Wikidata, and I'm new to Wikipedia editing. Yeah. I work in an art museum library. We wanted, we're thinking about ways of possibly how can we get people to start writing about the works of art from our collection in Wikipedia. Mm. had a question the other day. I was talking to someone here, and they said that the info box in Wikipedia article is structured data, and that apparently there's a bot that goes out and reads that structured data and pulls everything into Wiki, Wikidata. So if we did something like, um, you know, where we were writing the articles about these individual art objects, they probably would end up into Wikidata, is my question. And then the second is, if our museum ever wanted to take out structured data from our collection of management system and get it into Wikidata, yes. if we had in that structured data info box our section of it for the museum collection, would, would that be the point? So to help reconcile, there's an article in Wikipedia, it's over here, there's a duplicate session number or something. So there's kind of two questions. So the first one is what we do is we already had info boxes before we started Wikidata. 
there's a lot of data in there, so people pull it to Wikidata. But that's the old system. It's harvesting the data we already had. If I would start now, I would import all the artworks to Wikidata directly and do it the other way around. The, 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 problem, the problem is how do, you, how do you do that? That's, that's where the data contribution thing uh, comes in. Uh, Lydia showed that there's, a, there's a several pages on Wikidata how to contribute. But uh, just like with images, uh, share your data on your website. Not come, uh, just put it in an open license with the images and the data. Like what the Mac machine did, they, uh, they just published their data on, uh, in this case, on GitHub, and they published their images and said, it's all public. Have fun. <laughs> and that, that seems uh, most of the, 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 the good uh, uh, big collections who manage to do the open data thing just publish their things on their website in open format. <coughs> and uh, once you've done that, you can work together with your local volunteers to actually get something on Wikidata or Commons. And we are happy to talk to you about that. Yeah, yeah. and where are you from, by the way? Excellent. Excellent. Collection. Your collection. We I worked on your collection on Wikidata. Yeah, we already have all your paintings. Talk, talk to Sarah. Talk to Sarah. Yeah. Sarah, yes. Uh, I have your paintings. I, I, have I just need your, your data. Paintings, so you can watch here. So now we just need paintings. your data. Now we just need your data. Excellent. I have one minute, so one more question for uh, anyone. That's exciting. Yeah, I see uh, one hand up there. How do, what's your criteria for notable work? Like some work may, may not be in their famous or given So right now, notable author or no, notable <coughs> collection. If some collection in the world bothers to keep it in storage and you know uh, uh, spend money on it that way, that's notable enough for us. We haven't really run into works yet that are not by notable author and not a notable collection that was causing issues. So uh, we, we didn't really run into it yet. I can't imagine when you have like historic houses full of paintings. Uh, you're not sure yet who made it and uh, if they're notable, but we probably have to run into it first before we can have a discussion. Otherwise, it's a bit like strong in our domain. Can I ask a follow-up question? <laughs> I'm not sure about the time. Yes. yes. One. <laughs> yeah, do it. <laughs> so, like you mentioned versions, you can upload as many versions of like, art as possible and you have to sort it out, so that takes time and effort. Yes. So if people are working on that, they can work on something else. So how detailed do you want your projects to be? <laughs> uh, with paintings, we uh, do the physical painting. So there's uh, the one I showed by Van Gogh has three, three versions on three different locations. That's the scale we do it. Uh, and uh, the most complicated ones right now are triptychs. So the, 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 the insertion is the three parts, because sometimes parts mm -hmm torn off and end up somewhere else and replaced and we still ha haven't figured it out completely. Lots of uh, pieces of uh, things. Thanks for your time.